Konbawa, Pat Tokuyama here, creator of All Day I Eat Like a Shark and the new Japanese cooking club all about plant-based Japanese food. So if this is your first time here, consider subscribing for more Japanese cooking videos like this one. Today what we're going to be doing is actually making some steak. So shiokoji steak is one of my favorite steaks or ways to prepare steak. And if you've never heard of that before, that is what we're going to be making today. So stay tuned if you want to see more. I have all of my ingredients here ready to go and it's not that much. All you need is some steak and some shiokoji. Anosa, shiokoji te kita koto aru? Have you heard of shiokoji before? Well, you are in for a treat if you have never heard of it. So. Steak, all we're gonna do is marinate it with the uh, shiokoji for about 30 minutes and it'll be ready to cook. You can put it on the grill if you want or you can just uh, do it on the stove, whatever you prefer. So this is a New York uh, steak and actually I'm just gonna put in the shiokoji first. So my hands are gonna get a little bit contaminated from the beef. So I'm just gonna put in about uh, three to four tablespoons depending on how big your steak is. I think this is a pound. Yeah, this is exactly one pound. So it's a pretty good size but you want to put in enough shiokoji um, so that you have enough to coat it evenly. And that's one of the reasons why I'm using a plastic bag so that I can easily coat it without making too much of a mess. So this is actually a really thick piece. And because of that, I'm actually gonna cut it in half. So we'll have two thinner pieces of New York steak and I'm actually gonna put in a little bit more now that I think of it. I'll just do another tablespoon two tablespoons, so five tablespoons total. And we're actually gonna cut this. So we'll use my mini cutting board here. And this is really thick, it's about two inches. So if you prefer a thick cut, I guess you wouldn't have to do this, but I actually don't want a thick piece because it's gonna take longer to cook. And I'm kinda hungry, so I wanna get going with the uh, food. So I'm just gonna cut this right in half down the middle. Of course, you can use whatever cut of steak you prefer. And all we're gonna do is put it in here and make sure that it's coated. So I marinate this in the fridge, usually. And you don't have to do it just 30 minutes. You can do it a little bit longer if you prefer, maybe up to an hour. Actually, once you use shiokoji in your marinades for steak and fish, for example, like we're doing today, you may never want to go back to using just salt because it's that much better. So shiokoji has many different effects. It helps to break down the proteins, which help to uh, release some of the natural umami flavors. So it breaks down the proteins into their little building blocks known as amino acids, since proteins are made with amino acids. And when those amino acids get uh, freed from the proteins, that generates or creates umami. Umami is known by several different compounds that have been isolated. So inosinic, inosinic acid is one, glutamic acid is another, and there's many other umami compounds as well. So this is essentially it. And I'm gonna go ahead and let this rest here on the counter for about 30 minutes, and then we'll go ahead and cook it up. So see you back in about 30 minutes. Omatase shimashita. Sorry to keep you waiting. And our shiokoji steak is ready to be cooked. And what we're gonna do is just cook one piece because I don't eat meat all the time and I just a little bit every now and then is enough for me. So what we're gonna do is cook it on the uh, grill that I have here. I think it's nice and warm. We're gonna use some olive oil, extra virgin olive oil for a little bit of flavor, additional flavor. Just gonna put a little bit there. And usually I would do this on the stove using my stainless skillet to sear it. But for illustration purposes, I thought I would just use my pan here. So we're gonna do one piece and we're gonna freeze the other piece for a future date. So it's nice and soft. So we'll let that go for a couple minutes until it gets a nice brown crust on the bottom and then we'll flip it over and uh, continue cooking it. And for this piece, we can go ahead and stick it in the freezer and it should be good for uh, a few weeks. Okay guys, so it's been a couple minutes. What we're gonna do is flip this over. You should be able to see there's a nice brown crust going on down there. You can see that beautiful crust. So we'll let that go for another uh, minute, roughly, 
and then we're going to take it off the heat and let it rest for about 15 minutes. And the point of doing that is so that all of the juices don't leak out when you cut into the steak. So if you've ever cut a steak right away because you're impatient after cooking it, either on the grill or on the stove, you might have found that all of the uh, juices or the blood has uh, started to seep out right away. So one way to get around that and to ensure that you don't have that happen to you is to let the steak rest for about 15 to 20 minutes and then it'll be ready to eat. This should be just about done. So I'm gonna turn off the heat and I was making a little salad here for the uh, side. We have some homegrown mizuna here, if you're wondering what this is. It's hydroponic mizuna. Same stuff that they sell at the market, at least at my, my local market, except I grew it. So this will be a little bit of, a, of vegetables, a decent amount of vegetables to add to our dish. All right, it smells amazing, by the way. So we'll go ahead and uh, take this out. You can see the other side is nicely crusted right there. Just go ahead and let this sit on my plate and rest. And now we can continue to make our salad. See you guys back in about uh, 15 minutes after it has rested and we'll do a little cutting. And uh, I like my steaks somewhat on the rarer side, so that's how I did it today. If you like your steaks more cooked, then you might need to cook it a little bit longer. You can always use a uh, meat thermometer to check with the internal temperature. That'll give you a good idea of how well done your steak is. So obviously this is a thinner, cut. We cut it to maybe about three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. So depending on how thick your steak is, that might take a little bit longer to cook as well. So keep that in mind and I'll see you guys back in a little bit. Okay guys, so the steak has now rested for a good 20 minutes. What we're going to do is cut it. I took the liberty to uh, go ahead and serve myself some rice um, and also some miso shiro. So Zakokumai is what this is. It has the little grains in the, the rice and that's why it's a little bit purple. It has some black bean or red bean. And we're gonna be doing wasabi joyu. Wasabi joyu today. This is wasabi and some soy sauce. So you're just gonna mix that together. That's gonna to be our little seasoning for the steak. Even though it has plenty of flavor from the shiokoji, this is one of my favorite ways to enjoy steak. So let's go ahead and cut it. My favorite part. By the way, this smells delicious. So there's the uh, Looks like a really fatty cut right there. Not too much meat. Let's get another centered cut. So it's like uh, nicely done, medium rare. And I'll show you guys a little close up how that looks. So that's today's lesson, shiokoji steak. One of my favorite ways to enjoy steak, Japanese style of course. And all you need is a little bit of a wasabi joyu. You can just use regular shoyu or soy sauce. Alternatively, you can use shoyu koji, which is the shoyu version of the shio koji that we made today. So you have to make this using kome koji and shoyu. So you can see the little rice grains in there. It has a little bit of a different flavor from just straight shoyu. You can also do ume joyu, which is umeboshi mixed with shoyu. You can do nira joyu, which is uh, nira or garlic chives mixed with shoyu or soy sauce. You can also do bata joyu. Bata is butter. Japanese pronunciation with shoyu. It's one of my favorite and it's a super rich uh, sauce if you've never used it before. One of my favorite ways aside from steak is to use it on salmon, wild salmon. And what else could you do? You could do daikon oroshi, which is a grated daikon with a little bit of shoyu, soy sauce, with some lemon juice, or you can do ponzu on top of that daikon oroshi. You can maybe even do like a miso dressing. But uh, I would say my top two favorites are uh, wasabi joyu and uh, depending on my mood, either ponzu or bata joyu, bata joyu, bata, bata joyu is my other favorite. So wasabi joyu, bata joyu, and ponzu are probably my top three favorites for seasoning a steak. So that's gonna be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And other than that, I will see you guys in my next video. If you wanna see more videos like this one, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, hit the alarm bell for notifications for when I post new videos. And other than that, see you next time. Jane, bye bye. Wow, onaka suita. means I'm hungry. I'm very hungry. You can also do momiji oroshi, which is a little bit of red pepper mixed with the daikon and then grated. Uh, and you can also try like an onion, an onion dressing with steak. It's one of my other favorite ways. And of course, sesame with salt, sesame oil with salt.